The other day, I was in the city with my two children. The sun was beating down. It was hot. My children said they needed a drink. So I stopped in at the local public library, knowing that they had drinking fountains out the front. I went to the first fountain, in the basement. No water. It was turned off, or broken. I went up the stairs to the second fountain that was just outside the library. It was also turned off. I thought, okay, what's going on here? Of course, my immediate suspicion was that it had something to do with the non-existent pandemic. My children were thirsty, so I went into the library to ask the staff if there was any water available. The lady at the desk said that I had to sign in first. Sign in, I said. I just want to ask a question about the drinking fountains. She continued to insist that I must give her my contact details first. I said, I just want to know if there are any drinking fountains working or not. My children are thirsty. Getting visibly upset, she continued, Sir, you must give me your contact details or I'll have to contact the Queensland Police. At that point, I started to get pissed off. Here's a librarian threatening to call the police on me for simply asking her a question. I told her that I just wanted to ask about the drinking fountains and that I do not intend on entering the library. Again, she said that if I don't give her my contact details, she'll have to call the police. I said, forget it, I'm leaving, and I headed out the front door with my two children. Afterwards, my eight-year-old son asked me, why do they want to know your contact details? I replied, uh, just because of the stupid pandemic. But Dad, that doesn't make any sense. When we go into the crowded shopping centres, they don't ask for our contact details. When we go to the park, we can drink water from the bubblers. And my son is right. It makes no sense. Every park we've been to in the last couple of months has had flowing water. We've been able to drink freely. Every shopping centre that we've been to with hundreds, if not thousands of other people, nobody has asked us for our contact details. Actually, as we left the library that day, we literally walked about 100 metres to a nearby public park, and surprise surprise, there was a drinking fountain that worked. Only 100 metres behind us, a librarian was prepared to call the police on us for something that essentially was a figment of her imagination. By the way, can you even catch coronavirus from a fountain? Of course you could if you sucked on it, but the government aren't even being consistent. Library bubblers are dangerous, but bubblers in the park are completely fine. It doesn't make any sense. You could probably catch coronavirus from a wall that's been sneezed on, but should we be putting signs up saying, please don't lick the walls? According to Queensland Health data, as of 15th of November 2020, there have been zero new cases of COVID-19, more than 1.2 million tests performed, only 1,185 total cases, that's in all of history mind you, with only six total deaths. That's a death rate of only about 0.5%. For comparison, here are some other statistics from the Australian Bureau of Statistics for causes of death in Queensland 2019, the latest statistics I could muster. 63 people died from being an occupant of a car that collided with a fixed or stationary object. Perhaps we should outlaw cars. Perhaps we should forbid the use of fixed or stationary objects near roads. 10 people died from drowning in swimming pools. Obviously, we have to ban swimming pools. Nine people died from a fall on a level surface from slipping, tripping or stumbling. Nine people died from falling out of or through a building or structure. Clearly, we need to knock down all buildings, you know, to keep us safe. Eight people died from malignant neoplasms of the penis. Ouch. And in Queensland, just as many people died from accidental poisoning or exposure to alcohol in 2019 as they have from COVID this year. So obviously, alcohol needs to go. Even the Queensland government themselves say there are no community cases of COVID remaining. There are currently eight active cases and they're all accounted for. All eight are in hospital, with none in the ICU. But the local library would have us believe that it's the mid-1300s and we're currently in the middle of the bubonic plague. Late on that day, after going to the library, my children and I went to a food festival. Of course, out the front, there was the mandatory contact tracing station. Everyone had to get their temperatures taken with one of those guns they point at your forehead. My five-year-old daughter refused, as she didn't like the idea of somebody pointing a gun at her head. Despite this, the staff let her through, saying how cute she was. Apparently, being cute overrides coronavirus. 
They tested me, and apparently I had a fever, but everyone could see that it was an extremely hot day. I had my hat on. I was standing out in the midday sun. Of course, my head temperature was going to be hotter than normal. Actually, most people I saw were testing higher than normal. Pretty much everybody had a technical fever, but the staff kept waving us through. We also had to fill out one of those stupid contact tracing forms. As of a few weeks ago, I've decided that I'm never going to write down my actual details. I usually just write down Joe Biden or Scott Morrison and make up an address and phone number. When I go to McDonald's or a cafe or wherever with my children, the staff often ask me to scan those stupid QR codes with my phone. I just turn on the phone's light and pretend I'm scanning. Actually, I don't think I've ever honestly done it correctly, and I've almost always lied on those contact tracing forms. That's right, this pandemic has turned me into a compulsive liar. I just don't like the idea of giving out my private information to people I don't know. Some of you might be saying that I'm selfish and not thinking about other people, but I would retort by saying, just look at the statistics. There are no cases of community transmitted coronavirus in Queensland. That means that all of this social distancing, all of these QR codes, all of these contact tracing forms, all those water fountains that have been turned off, it's all for naught. It's a show. It's pandering to some non-existent threat. And as I told my son, we have to resist tyranny in all its forms, no matter how trivial. Ordinarily, I'm an honest sort of guy, but I'm not going to go along with this. More people in Queensland die from slipping, tripping and stumbling. More people die from neoplasms of the penis. Why don't we have information campaigns about that? Why don't we have mandatory penis information sessions at our workplaces or in McDonald's? Ah, that's right, because it's rare to die from it, just like COVID is in Queensland. As I said, we have to resist tyranny in all its forms. Mm -hmm.